All right, everyone. So thank you for another episode of Faith in Home Buying. This is Tamika Ellsworth, and I am equipping people of faith uh, for the home buying process. I got a guest uh, today, um, a longtime uh, guest, business and, and, and personal. Um, she came on about six months ago, kind of right before shelter in place hit when COVID was just kind of getting started. And we had a good update on <clears throat> the lending side of mortgage and real estate. And now she's back again. Um, Audrey um, of uh, the Hutton Mortgage Team. Um, Audrey, say hi to the people for a second. Hey, everybody. Tamika, thank you so much for having me on the show. It's good to be back. Yeah, absolutely. It's good to have you. <clears throat> and, you know, now the show is only 30 minutes versus an hour when you were before. So we're going to get right into it. But um, I, I just, I, I need to say this because I remember, you know, we talked about, you know, before on some of my past episodes, you know, not you being um, on, but how important it is to understand where you've been called to and that it's an assignment, that it's not just the work you do, but it is you, you know, being able to be a light for wherever you're at. And these are sometimes with your colleagues, sometimes with your bosses, sometimes even as you are the owner of a company, you um, create environments that hopefully people can thrive in and you're, you're a change agent to it, right? But um, Audrey, even though we have a business relationship and then also a personal one too, um, you've throughout the six months have actually grown spiritually in a lot of ways on, on because of your situation. I just want to give you a little bit of space to kind of share that because I think it's going to bless somebody today. Thank you. And thanks for giving me the opportunity just to share my experience. And, you know, a lot of people are dealing with a lot of stuff. And we were talking about how in business relationships, we never know what one another are dealing with, right? So everywhere we go, you go to the bank, you go to the store, our clients, vice versa. Um, so my personal growth that you're talking about is my son was in a, a very, very bad car accident. So I'm a single mom. My son is 19 years old, first year in college. And because of COVID, he's, you know, was driving down um, towards Santa Barbara and Simi Valley, that area, to visit his girlfriend and some friends because they haven't seen each other. Everybody went home for college. So um, his car accident, unfortunately, the car rolled. He was ejected out the window and he was in a coma for three months. So imagine being a parent and getting a phone call at three o'clock in the morning saying that your son is on life support. So drove down Santa Barbara five hours away from me. Um, the growth that I went through was I've never prayed more. I've never had more faith. I've never relied on my community more. My team was amazing. Um, you know, I'm the type of person where just like we've had chats before, I've always had a really strong faith with God, but not necessarily the structure with it. And my faith was completely, you know, challenged, tested and renewed through this experience. And, um, the people around me that carried me, um, have been my clients, my realtors, my friends, you know, and it's just, it blows my mind that the people that supported me through this experience, um, are people that also had challenges going on in their own lives. And it's something that I promised, you know, in my prayers and my son is doing amazing by the way. So he's recouped, he's in therapies, he's, he's deadlifting 225 pounds now. So we're a month out and he's doing awesome, but yeah. it's, it's more of, yeah, my, my faith, um, just going completely forward. You don't have anything when the doctors are telling you one thing versus what I know is going to happen is that my kid's going to get through this. And, um, I commend you so much because it's really hard to blend that business and spiritual aspect and have the faith that, you know, your goal is helping people. And that's why I, I turned to you. I didn't talk to a lot of people during that time frame. you know, when I'm in the hospital 24 seven by my son's side, but just the texting back and forth between you and other people that I knew had that strong relationship and had that, that vocal, you have a radio show talking about faith and home buying. Um, you know, really, really impressed me and, you know, gives me the courage to speak out and tell people, hey, you know, God saved my kid. Everybody's prayers contributed to, you know, call to action to, to be there for him. And I'm ever grateful, you know, so my faith has completely changed through this experience and, and strengthened. And I'm just so excited to talk about it and just share my experience with everybody else too, that it's not, um, we can't question why things happen, but you get through them and you just um, know that they're happening for a reason. There's been so many blessings that came out of this too. So my team did awesome while I was gone. We had record months and it feels so good to be back in things and having my son be good. So, 
Yep. No, and, and it's good to have you back too. I mean, I love your team. Don't we, Ali, shout out, Elizabeth, shout out, Jeremy, you, you know, you were in there, um, but it still was nothing like having Audrey uh, there in order to, especially with, with, with my clients and, you know, just, just how you are and who you are. So you are a gem and a jewel in the light, and I'm glad that you are back, and I'm so glad uh, for your son who's going to kick butt on an amazing testimony on what he has to share, because I know it's amazing to come from a coma he 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 angels were completely around him and, yeah. and man and there's so much more to his uh, his life and so i'm excited to hear his journey too um that being said so I, I just i needed to say that just just to kind of get that out the way to let somebody know today that you know your, your prayers that you do for your colleagues for your bosses for the people around you believe it or not they carry some weight you may not know what's going on in the person's life but i tell you what you know if you get that unction just to either pray for them call them up send them a you know something edifying do something um with your your, your voice and speak it out um even calling them up and saying hey you know what like I think I need to pray for you. Like, are, are you okay? You know, it's, it's just that human connection, especially all the stuff that's going on in the, in the world um, too. And not letting that cloud the fact that, wait a minute, we're first and foremost called for people's souls. We're first and foremost called yeah. to, um, uh, you know, to, 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 to spread the love of Jesus pretty much. Like that's just, that's what we're called to do. It, 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 it doesn't matter what the climate of the world is. Uh, we live by a different set of standards and rules because, you know, our God is greater. So that being said, I had to get that out of the way. But now we're going to go down to business. <laughs> faith and home buying, right? So equipping people of faith for the home buying process obviously has to do a lot with um, what's going on in the current times. Before um, shelter in place, you know, there was a set of rules and regulations that we were following, but obviously things have changed um, since then. And <clears throat> real quick in this first segment, um, I, I want to talk just quickly about forbearance. Um, we're going to talk about some other things in the second ones, but, but for right now, I want to talk a little bit about forbearance because I know there's a lot of people that actually went through this process. Mm -hmm. Now what? You know, and that's whether you're FHA, VA, or even just regular, your traditional um, conventional. And Audrey, talk mm -hmm. about how to set, how a person needs to set themselves up, what to look out for um, during this particular time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, in regards to forbearance, when they first made that announcement um, that you could not make your home payment and you would be fine, I immediately reacted and sent a video to all of my, smear, my sphere and said, don't do it. <laughs> and there's absolutely consequences, you guys. So just because they're saying you don't have to doesn't mean it's not going to have, you know, impact you in some way. So um, just as predicted, nobody can refinance or buy a home if you're in forbearance. So what that means is that you have to catch up, you have to make your payments. And if you make the payment and catch up, then you can continue. So it's okay if it shows on, on the credit report, they are making exceptions for that. But that's how it's impacting so many people. So the, the people that thought that, oh, cool, I don't have to make my payment, you do. You just have to catch up. And every servicer is a little bit different. So you'll have to reach out to your particular mortgage company to see what their rules are about catching up, but it's not free money. They're just not letting you skip your payment. I would say the overall impact of forbearance, what it's having on the market is, as we know, there's over 4 million people in forbearance. So if you think about the bigger picture with that, how that's impacting not only lending, but companies in general, people, their jobs, everything, because, you know, lending, stock, everything is, is what drives the economy. So when you have over 4 million people in forbearance, the lenders are not receiving those monies. They're not getting the payments, which means that they don't have that money to lend out, which is going to drive a whole other slew of factors. So it's making banks really tighten their filters. So that's why a lot of people have heard the bigger banks have cut programs. They've increased the FICO score requirements. They are um, not lending jumbo anymore. You know, you hear all those things, those are the after effects. And um, when, when COVID first came out and a lot of people were, were let go or put on unemployment, they were still allowing funding loans to happen. And then because of money's not coming in and other things, they changed that immediately to where if you were on unemployment, you couldn't qualify for the loan. So people that were in mid transaction had to cancel, right? They couldn't, you have to be employed. So current rules are you have to be employed. You can't be on employment or temporary leave. 
You have to be fully employed, receiving a paycheck in order to fund a loan. You can't have any forbearance or be in forbearance. It can show that you were in forbearance as long as you're caught up immediately. Mm -hmm. So that's current rules. Mm -hmm. Right. No, and I know that's going to uh, affect also too. just just think about it. These people being in forbearance and they can't catch up because mm -hmm. maybe they weren't working. So what does yeah. that mean now for real estate? And I was telling people like what that means is not necessarily that prices are going down. No, but hopefully we have an influx of a little bit more homes, fortunately, but unfortunately. And yeah. that means obviously more inventory for clients to actually choose from. So mm -hmm. yes, you may see people going into forbearance, a lot of foreclosed type of properties, even short sales that are about to mm -hmm. happen. Um, so keep your eyes out open, you know, for those and short sales are not usually short either. Mm -hmm. um, however, you are going to have a lot more homes to choose from that are probably on the foreclosure list, meaning, you know, looking at HUD homes, looking at, um, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, um, um, products or that websites that actually cater to foreclosed properties. We're probably going to see an influx of those a lot more um, mm -hmm. probably for the next year or so, unfortunately. Um, but that being said, when we come back, we're going to talk more about that, probably tie that part up. But then there's also another factor that I want people to think about too, when moving out of um, the area, moving out of the state, refinance um, options and things that they need to look out for, for uh, their own um, equity uh, in, in their homes and how to navigate uh, that next phase. So stay tuned. This is Faith in Home Buying. Uh, I'm here with Audrey Hutton uh, and of the Hutton Mortgage Team, and we're going to talk a little bit more about what's going on in the market and how you can set yourself up for success uh, in this next phase. Thank you and stay tuned. All right, so we are back. This is Faith in Home Buying, and I'm equipping people of faith with my friend and buddy, uh, Audrey Hutton of Hutton Mortgage. Audrey, tell the people, real quick before we start the segment, how can we contact you? Because you are licensed in all 50 states. Um, so those that are looking to move and relocate, look, I'm your girl for the real estate side. I can connect you with an amazing um, real estate agent. However, Audrey, talk about how people can contact you. Yeah, thank you. You can find us on all the social media, Hutton Mortgage Team, and you can reach us at 408-426-8755. Um, and you can email us, Audrey at HuttonMortgageTeam.com. Excellent. And we'll have that, all, you know, you can always contact me. I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up with um, Audrey. She's great. Her and her team are wonderful. So we talked a little bit about you know, forbearance and how to set yourself up. I think, you know, we have a good general overview of what you need to do with regards to forbearance. And it's not as, uh, it's not as easy as you think that it is. And if you need help in that situation, please, please, please reach out because there are resources and Audrey and her team can get you set up um, so that you can navigate this successfully because a lot of times credit isn't going to be an issue. Obviously funds are going to be an issue. You may want to try to refi if you can't do it, or you, I don't know if you have to do a short sale. So again, looking at the whole overall situation, we'll be able to better assess what you can do in order to save your home or move out into a different area. And we're going to talk about that now. Let's roll into talking about now that home prices are kind of going up, you know, and, and, and areas are too expensive for people to live in. Um, now we're finding people moving out of the area into other states and maybe even to other regions, part of it's still the same um, state um, that's more affordable. Um, so I know you have a lot of that going on, um, Audrey, and, and talk about that on the finance side on what that looks like and how people can help um, navigate if that's where they fit. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, what we're seeing kind of tying in our original conversation with COVID um, mm -hmm. a couple minutes ago, you know, with with this impact of COVID and forbearance and people moving with all these companies saying that people can work from home. Um, my whole team's working from home, right? It's the everybody's realizing what is the permanent That's impact. You, have too, and you can't be. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> everybody's realizing what's what's going to be the permanent impact of COVID. What's going to completely shift? You know, in the Bay Area, people would drive an hour to an appointment with traffic, have that appointment, and then an hour back. Um, so we are seeing an influx of people moving in and out of the Bay Area because there's still a lot of people fighting to be here, right? There's just going to be a transition. So there's other markets that are really on fire right now because people are maintaining their same salaries and yet 
um, buying in cheaper areas because they have the luxury of working from home. So the big question is, is that going to be permanent, right? Are these big companies that have such a huge influence on this Bay Area in tech going to permanently let people work from home? So um, a lot of people are saying, hey, I'll move out of state. I'll move to this other area. So what we do, what we you know partner with Tamika on is anybody that is looking at that transition, you need to look at cost of living. So is your company going to transition your salary down because you're in a lower cost of living area? So, you know, have, have those talks with your companies if you're thinking of moving, but just know that Tamika can help and refer you to a specific agent in any state or area that you're moving to. And again, as Tamika mentioned, we're licensed everywhere, so you can work with the same loan officer. And we, you basically just need an analysis as far as where you're at right now. Can you not afford your payment because maybe you got laid off? A lot of people are in that situation. Maybe you have a home here that the equity is not quite there yet. Yet, so you might feel stuck and, and you can buy in a cheaper area. So we basically just look at the analysis to see, do you need to pull cash out? What is your salary going to be? And just put together multiple scenarios so that you can feel comfortable and make the right decision. A lot of people have to reevaluate their whole lives right now. Right, exactly. And, and that's the, what the important part is as far as uh, teamwork uh, is concern and which I you know need to do better at. So in order to contact me, and if that is you or you feel in that type of position, or shoot, maybe there's a relocation situation that you need to do, maybe city to city in the area. You know, you can always contact me at 408 561 seven nine two two that's that comes directly to me if i don't answer don't worry i'll get back to you i have a really nice recording too uh and, but then also you can contact me at tamika ellsworth.com that's my website and you can also contact me there as well as all social media platforms you know now i'm on tiktok so that's real estate underscore t uh and so i think uh in in, in a lot of ways uh it's 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 setting yourself up at least in this particular season after the six month season now between now and the end of the year i have a lot of my clients having to set themselves up for um success really um setting themselves up in a way where uh, you know, number one, if they can't refinance, okay, well, what can we do? Can we, can we refi and get your payments low enough? Because uh, remember, we have low interest rates, very low interest rates. So if you can get your payments low enough, but yet huh, low enough for uh, your rents to cover over um, that amount, you're actually in a good position. So that's the ideal situation, I think, with a lot of my clients. Like, look, if you don't have to sell the place and you maybe maybe pull money out, cheaper area, put some money down or money that you have saved, well, then keep the place, especially if it has a positive income um, flow for you and you can actually rent you know, out your, your, your home in, the, in that area, depending on your HOA um, guidelines, and try to go for it. Um, I'm also seeing those that are, are looking to sell in, 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 in areas and having a little problem. You know, remember, COVID, when it happened in, in, in March, and I, and I got to make sure, you know, pe pe when it happened in March, prices stalled, okay? You know, October, November, December of 2019, that's, that's usually our slow time in the market. Home prices aren't spiking. You get into January, February, then you're almost, you know, starting on the uptick because there's springtime happening in, in, in the March time. But remember, COVID happened. What happened with prices? Prices stalled. They did not go up. Some actually went down because most people pulled out. Sellers were like, I need to sell this property. Well, let me just get it off my hands for as quick as I can. So your prices are not as high in your January, February, March, all the way to probably about May um, uh, time. It's May, shoot, August um, times. It was at a lull. And so you have to understand too, when you're trying to look at selling your home or selling your property now, remember it's not your normal uh, market. Um, and I, I have to say this, even to, to listing agents, there's homes that my clients loved and I just, I couldn't, I, I couldn't, I didn't, the value wasn't there. And rightly so, when the appraiser came to, to look at the value, there was not, there weren't good comps that would justify higher price points. And you have to keep that into consideration that right now we're in a late um, summer uh, market. Um, a lot of times, you know, you have your springtime that happens, it kind of peaks a little bit, then it goes up a little bit more inside your um, summertime. Why? Because kids are out of school, you know, 
things things happen uh, uh, during the summer. People love actually going in the summer in order to find properties. And then it kind of goes down, like now we would be on the downturn really because school has already started, but now it's not. Now we, we, we are still having people at, you know, because we have such sure. low interest rate prices, we're still having people now just finally starting to look, prices finally starting to get higher. So it's going to be very interesting in these next um, um, winter months, fall and winter months, on what's going to happen. And plus, obviously, we have a, we have a um, election <laughs> that's coming up. Um, still, Audrey, talk about interest rates. What is the forecast um, from now to the end of the year? Because they're extremely low right now. But what is the forecast? What are they saying financially in about you know a 30-second time slot? Let me get my, my magic crystal ball. With I know. <laughs> uh, so I'll tell you guys, whenever it comes to the market, there's so many things that are influence, influencing it. But the typical things that have influenced the interest rates are not happening. It's all over the place. Um, for one, as you mentioned, it is an election year. Typically in an election year, you have rates that stay low. They increase after the election, just depending on, you know, the, the economic situation. Because of COVID, it's throwing everything. It's really going to depend on um, if the banks have their money recouped to lend again. Um, and obviously the job factor. And I think that the current prediction is that rates are going to stay low but then bump up maybe towards the end of first quarter next year. So that's where it's at right now, but just keep in mind that could change tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was a great crystal ball at, at, at that. But, and, and it is true. <laughs> and this is the reason why as well. And I want to end with this, and this is for somebody. And, and Audrey, again, thank you very much. Remember Audrey Hutton um, uh, and her the Hutton Mortgage team. Find her on Instagram. Give your number one more time. 408-426-8755 or huttonmortgageteam.com. Excellent. And so to round this out, you know, I just, I, I have to say this, like, this is a, a great time to set yourself up. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, uh, you know, at the end of the year, but a lot of my clients now, and I have to say this because when miracles and when opportunities come about, sometimes you only have a very small window in order to move. And I could tell you this, I've had clients recently that, you know, got themselves set up for success from their credit. They know what they're, you know, uh, going in for their pre-approval. They went through the work and then all of a sudden something came about, they're able to move. And then I have those that are just kind of stuttering, kind of going through opportunities come about, they can't produce in it. And then they have to go on to the next one. Now granted, God's able to bring things around, but wouldn't you want to be prepared to run through those doors of opportunity, those miracles, those things that happen and not have to, to, to wait or wait for it to come back around another 30 days, you know? Um, so get yourself prepared. If you need help, uh, contact me. Again, 408-561-7922. I have many different resources that I can connect you to, to down payment assistance programs, to lenders that I trust, and also to just whether it be in-state or out-of-state, um, I can help you. And I have helped people, and it's been amazing stories. Hopefully I have them on, uh, you know, coming, coming soon. But um, again, um, thank you so much for tuning in. This is Faith in Home Buying, and I'm loving equipping people of faith for the home buying process. Thanks again, Audrey.